Kristen from Media Better One and it's here today to talk to you about my fall wardrobe plans and the things that I think, possibly delusionally, that I will be knitting and sewing this season. So, um, just a little bit of background. In case you're new, I have been knitting since 2007 and I have been sewing since about 2020. 2021, so a couple of years now. And um, I think it's a really fun opportunity to put both of those things together and try to put a wardrobe together for the fall. Um, so if you are also a sewist, you might be familiar with Seamwork. Uh, I am a member of their platform. It's like 10 bucks a month. You get a, a new credit for a new pattern every month. Um, although at this point I have built up so many credits. <laughs> um, I do, I do get a lot of their patterns as well. But one of the benefits of membership is that you can participate in their Design Your Wardrobe program. Uh, you can do it anytime you want, but they do sort of a live version of it in the fall and then again in the spring, or they do it in the late summer for the fall and winter, and then I guess in the late winter for the spring and summer. Um, so I have been doing this, let's see, I think this is the third fall that I've done it. So that would be 20 since 2021. Uh, and I think I've done it twice for spring. And they walk you through this whole process of putting together a mood board for the season, putting together a color palette for the season, helping you, you know, plan outfits that you're actually gonna wear, help you develop like your style so you don't end up making things you're not actually gonna wear. Um, it's really comprehensive and I think it's really well done. So, um, I don't think you can access it if you're not a member unless you pay um, a fairly significant sum of money. But if you are a member of Seamwork or if you've been thinking about it, I think it's absolutely worth it. And I love the program. So I have just more or less finished it for this upcoming season. So you go through this whole uh, wardrobe planning exercise or a series of exercises and there's videos and there's worksheets. Um, and what you come out of it with is a mood board and a um, a color palette that's including like not just your colors but your fabrics, your print ideas, um, and then you do you design some outfits and I drew them very poorly, um, and then you actually start planning your projects, which patterns you're going to use with which fabric and which colors and things like that. So I'll first show you my mood board for the fall and winter season. Getting a little bit of reflection, there we go. Um, I don't really know what to say about this. I think it's very me, it's very fall. You got a little bit of a 70s vibe in here. That's definitely me. You've got some chunky knits, some really kind of, um, not like shirt, like textured fabrics. It's not a lot of, you know, you don't see any like bold geometric shapes. That's not really, my speed at all. So I'm more about florals and uh, textured and, and sort of more minimal prints. So that is my mood board. And from there, I put together my palettes. So I've got my neutrals, I've got my, um, my basics, kind of going to go more with everything and then I've got my more uh, statement colors uh, and then I've got some prints here at the bottom. This one I was gonna order and in the time between I saw it and a few days later when I was ready to place the order it went out of stock and it's a dead stock fabric so it's not gonna come back. Right. And then from those I developed my <laughs> very very poor outfit sketches. Um, so you see a skirt and sweater combo, jeans and a, you know, cute top, dress with a jacket, um, flared jeans with the very obvious, uh, with the plaid sweater, plaid skirt and a top and sort of wide leg pants with a short sleeve top. So those are my, after doing this process, those are my basic concepts for both my knitting and my sewing projects for the fall. Um, 
they're not guaranteed to stay forever. There will probably be changes. Um, and they tell you to leave, you know, space in sort of your schedule for what they call wild cards. You know, you just, you see something and you just gotta, you gotta start it. You, you know exactly what you want it to look like and you need to cast on or you need to, you need to take that fabric from your stash and just, even if it doesn't fit in. So I'm sure that will happen. But that is my basic concept for my fall and winter wardrobe. So let's, uh, talk a little bit about some of the projects I have planned. Uh, I'm going to start with the knitting. Uh, as you might imagine, I have fewer knitting projects planned. Um, and when I say projects, I basically mean sweaters. And since we're talking about wardrobe, I'm sure there are, there are other socks and hats and things I'll be knitting for myself and other people throughout the season, but talking about specific uh, additions to my wardrobe that I have planned. Um, so again, yeah, there are fewer, but still probably a delusional number because I'm looking at at least five <laughs> sweaters that I want to make, plus finishing up some whips. Um, and I mean, that I was really trying to narrow it down. Like I, I could easily add like 10 sweaters to this list, but I'm trying to be somewhat rational. So. Let's talk about the knitting projects I have planned, the knitting sweaters that I have planned for the fall. Um, the first one is sort of a design. I mean, it's not sort of a design. It is a design that I'm working on. Um, so it's really just a concept at this point uh, because I'm not working from a pattern. I'm just making it up. I'm making it up as I go along. I'm consciously creating it using math and <laughs> things like that um but so far it isn't much of anything but i have started a little bit so this is just the hem um of the front this is going to be a pieced pullover but let me go ahead and show you the sketch um and instead of trying to hold my sketchbook up which i usually do i'm actually just a, a copy the picture and I'm going to scan it and I'm going to pop it in right here so that you can see it and get a little bit closer to it. Um, so this is a cozy oversized pullover with a very wide v-neck that is almost coming off the shoulders uh, and the body is worked in fisherman's rib. Um, it has a sort of I'm imagining a dramatic split cuff, so split hems and cuff, but split hems is what I meant to say. So you can see I am very neatly and tidily slipping the stitches along the edges of the hem so that they will look neat and tidy once it's all sewn up. Um, I want this to have an oversized fit. The body's going to be slightly A-line. Um, not nothing major, just to give it a little bit of swing, but not like a dramatic shape. Um, I haven't quite squared that with the fisherman's rib because if you're familiar with this um, stitch pattern, you know that you have to you have to increase. Like you, for normally for a sweater, you would increase one stitch on each side, or if you were working in the round two stitches on the front and two on the back. Um, but since I'm working flat, I can't just decrease one stitch on each side uh, without disrupting the ribbing pattern, which I don't want to do so. And uh, what I'm thinking is I'm going to put some, again, just a couple, maybe two stacked decreases kind of in the center. It's going to be a double decrease instead. So I keep the pattern in shape. Um, the idea is for this to be uh, not cropped, but not long, just to hit kind of right at um, right at the hip. I, uh, the math is going to be maybe a little tricky for me, trying to get that V-neck just wide enough that it's at the shoulders, but it's not actually falling off the shoulders. So the rest of the body is oversized, but the shoulders are going to need to have a closer fit, otherwise they will just fall off. Uh, so I am using Wool Dreamers Moda for this, which is a, uh, a worsted weight yarn that is um, a little bit rustic. I've definitely had a few few bits of uh, what they call veg matter in here. Um, if you're a sewist and not a knitter, that's just little pieces of hay and stuff that you get stuck in the yarn and don't come out during the cleaning process. Um, 
this is still soft, you know, definitely soft enough to wear, but it just has a little bit of tooth to it. Um, cause I don't want this sweater to be too drapey and loose fitting. I want it to, you know, since it's oversized, I don't also want it to be just kind of like sitting on you. I want it to have a little bit of structure. Um, so the body overall in the fisherman's rib, the sleeves and stockinette, uh, split cuffs on the sleeves as well. Um, I was really going back and forth about the hem because since the fisherman's rib is a one by one, I didn't want to use a one by one uh, on the hem as well, or it would just look off. And I didn't want to use a garter stitch. I wanted something that was fairly dramatically different um, so that it doesn't look like all one piece. So what I ended up going with was a, a three by three rib. Since it's a split hem, it doesn't actually need to have a lot of flexibility. So I think that's going to be okay. Um, that is more decorative. So that is the first sweater that I am working on that is pretty a pretty warm yarn. So that's really going to be something for when the weather cools down considerably. But I am hoping to maybe get a pattern done with that as well. More on that, uh, perhaps in a future video. So that is sweater number one planned for the fall. Sweater number two, I have already cast on. Uh, I will just show you my swatch first. So this is for the Jessie Mae Great Gingham Raglan. Um, if you saw the latest podcast, you'll know that I am not thrilled with the construction of this sweater, which is worked from the bottom up um, in the rounds with the raglan yoke. Um, I don't love that particular construction, but I wasn't willing to do the work to <laughs> redo it. Uh, so I just went ahead and cast on and I, you know, here's what I got done so far. So just a little bit of ribbing for the bottom hem. There's, it, the pattern says to start with the sleeves. I will absolutely never do that. I, I just can't. I also haven't decided yet whether I want to do full length sleeves or like a, not three quarter, but like maybe just below the elbow sleeves. So better not to start that just yet. I like to get the body done first because then the sleeves will seem like they go faster. Um, after all this color work in the round, the sleeve in the round will seem like it's going much faster with so many fewer stitches. So I am using Duerum Natura Ulysse in Merlot and Spin Cycle Yarns um, dyed in the wool and this is the Velocore colorway. Um, so it is looking pretty orange at this point, but there are a lot of other colors in this mix and I'm looking forward to seeing them come out in, in my sweater. Change I might make to the sweater is that there is no neck shaping, um, presumably because designing and writing and then knitting short rows in the round in color work is a huge pain. Um, but the neck, it's, 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 there's no shaping at all. And then if you see some people's pictures, it really looks like it's kind of bunching up around the neck in the front. So I may or may not many weeks from now, when I get to that point, finagle that a little bit, um, while designing and writing short rows in color work in the round is a pain kind of, if you have a basic idea of how short rows work, doing it kind of on the fly, isn't so bad. You can just it's much easier to just look at what you are doing and put the short rows in than it is to try to conceptualize what stitch you're on in 10 different sizes, where you need to do the wraps and how you're gonna maintain pattern for all those sizes. So I don't blame her for not putting that in, um, but I may make that adjustment. So we'll see about that. So that is sweater number two. Uh, and those are the only sweaters that I actually have yarn for. Um, I have ordered yarn for this next sweater. This is the Isle Pullover. This is a pattern by Brianna Mason that I uh, mentioned in my recent video about seven hidden gem sweater patterns for the fall. Um, and I just have been looking at it and looking at it and thought this is just a really perfect basic pullover that I would like to have myself. Uh, so I did order the yarn I have to say I am pretty disappointed. Um, it's been a long time since I've actually ordered from Webs, um, and I placed my order over a week ago and it took them a week to tell me that the yarn that I had ordered was out of stock, the colorway. Um, 
I am not a business mogul, but I feel like telling your customers, taking a week to tell your customers that something is out of stock is a little on the long side. So um, I did a quick back and forth with their customer service, picked another color, which is not exactly what I wanted, but close. Um, and they said, fine, we'll make that replacement, but I still haven't gotten a shipping confirmation or anything. So I, I don't know what's going on. It's, it's now been, uh, you know, kind of closing in on two weeks since I placed the order. So <sighs> not thrilled with that, but it is an Aran weight yarn from the fiber company. Uh, I think it is, I, it, they seem to have like a new line of yarn. It's called and make or something along those lines. It definitely has the word make in it. Um, and this is part of that. I can't remember. I want to say it's Wool and alpaca? Hang on a second. It is called And Make, and it is a blend of wool and alpaca, which is uh, personally one of my favorite fiber blends. I love alpaca. It's so soft, but it's just not very sturdy. And when you mix it with wool, uh, you tend to get a yarn that is the best of both, both worlds. I haven't tried it yet. I don't know, you know how well they've done with this blend, whether it's going to meet my expectations. Um, but I'm looking forward to getting it in the mail sometimes soon. <laughs> <laughs> so I can actually um, get started on this sweater. It is not a super complicated uh, sweater. I really like sort of the lines that are in it um, that I think is very flattering. I just think it's going to be a very flattering fit and a really basic um, piece that's going to go with a lot of things, including this fabric, which I will talk about in a minute, but I am planning to make this into a skirt and I think it would go the color that I picked and sort of the Relative simplicity of the design, it's gonna go well with that. So that's sweater number three. Uh, sweater number four is this. I'm not 100% sure on this. This is called the Bygone Blouse. And again, I want to make this to specifically to go with this fabric. Um, and my idea is to make a nice outfit for Christmas. This is very, you know, uh, a nice a bit 70s with the green and the yellow um, plaid that will be presumably a skirt and I think a, a nice sort of classic close fitting blouse would look really nice with that. I'm not 100% certain that's going to happen just because I already have such a big <laughs> list of things that I, that I want to do and um, I'm just not sure if it's actually going to happen, but I would, I would like to, I don't have any yarn ideas for this at all. Um, I would like it to be something very, um, very easy to wear right next to the skin. So something very soft, um, using it's a fingering way pattern. Um, but I really have just not gotten very far with this yet. Cause I'm just not sure if that's actually going to happen. Um, it's entirely likely that I will end up sewing a, a shirt to go with the skirt as well. Um, but I would like this as sort of a, uh, a little bit of a vintage look, um, sort of that fifties sweater girl, um, very classic. And again, hoping to have it for the specific holiday, but then, uh, being able to use it at other times. Um, so we'll see. That's a, that's a maybe. It's on my list. We'll see what happens. And then the fifth sweater is a sweater that does not exist yet. And what I want to make is a pullover in a fingering weight yarn. So it's not super heavy, but a fingering weight yarn that's a little toothy, a little more rustic, um, so that it's not super drapey because I want it to be kind of a cropped, not like super cropped, but like hitting right, right above the waistband, easy to throw on, goes with a lot of things, um, light, but still some structure sweater. So the kind of vibe I'm going for is uh, Andrea Mallory's Weekender. And I know she does have a version of this in a fingering weight yarn. Um, but one, I already have a weekender in a worsted weight yarn, which is, is fine, but it's a little bit heavier. Um, two, I don't love the neckline on this because I 
generally speaking, like to wear layer under my sweaters and with the boat neck, it's very difficult to find something that doesn't stick out. Um, and yes, I know she also just released a third iteration of this sweater uh, with the crew neck, um, but that is in a DK weight yarn. So that's kind of the vibe I'm going for with this sweater. I haven't found the perfect pattern yet. I don't know if maybe I'm just gonna cast on something, you know, on the fly and do it myself. Um, but I would like a lighter weight, easy to wear pullover for the earlier days, which given that it's already, you know, more than halfway through September, I should probably get moving on. But so far it's not happening. So if you have any pattern suggestions, I would love to hear them. Also yarn suggestions. Um, so again, I don't really want something that's a super soft, super washed merino because it's, it's just gonna have too much drape and I'm going for something with just a little bit more structure. So. Um, uh, a VFL or a um, a yarn that maybe is um, uh, woolen spun, so it's a little bit less drapey. Um, you know, I'm not planning the cables or anything, so it's just not something that needs to have great stitch definition. Um, still like it to be relatively soft. I mean, wearable, but um, anyway. If you've got a suggestion, you know, like something like uh, the Ulysse from Durham Natura is kind of like that. It's not rustic, but it is not super drapey. It has a lot of stability, um, but that's a sport weight. Or the Moda, which again is soft. Um, it's not super rustic. It is still nicely plied, but it has just a little bit more tooth to it, but this is a worsted weight. so. If you've got any suggestions for a fingering weight yarn, you know, not a sock yarn, because it's, it's not for socks. Um, and sock yarns are generally speaking designed to be different than, than sweater yarns. So I would love to hear your suggestions in the comment box down below. So those are the five sweaters I have <laughs> tentatively planned for the fall, probably into the winter. Um, I'm also hoping to finish up um, two whips my heirloom jumper and my Amelie cardigan, um, both of which are are getting there. They're, they're I could reasonably have them done uh, in the next two months. One other project that may or may not jump on the needles is my Magnolia Chunky. I swatched for this ages ago. I have the yarn. I really love this sweater. I have a beautiful, um, slightly off-white, a bit gray, yarn that is going to be gorgeous. Um, I just always seem to have these needles and I don't usually knit on larger needles, so I don't have a lot of them. Um, and the needles always just seem to be in, you know, that like one <laughs> larger gauge project that I'm working on. Um, so I think right now they're, I'm using them for my Amelie cardigan <laughs> and I need them for this. So that is on my make nine for the year. I may or may not end up putting that on the needles. We shall see. Um, it really is. It is a beautiful sweater that I definitely want to have in my wardrobe. But you know, we have to make decisions. We have to pare things down. <laughs> we can't knit all the sweaters all the time, or so I'm told. All right, let's talk about some sewing. So, sewing, <laughs> sewing, as you might imagine, goes a lot faster than knitting. Um, it is entirely reasonable to expect to sew two or maybe even three projects a month. Um, obviously some projects take longer than others. You know, pants are a lot more complicated than a skirt. Um, but I think I can reasonably expect to finish at least two projects a month. So I do have, um, I'll start with the patterns that I actually have here um, because I bought actual patterns. Uh, some of the other patterns are um, PDFs and I have had the, the, the patterns printed, but I don't have like a physical photo to show you. So one of the first projects I think I am going to do is this dress. And as you can see, the sewing patterns, they have lots of different options. I was originally going to do sleeveless. I'm not sure now. I think I may sort of more go toward that, that middle version uh, there. Um, and I believe I know what fabric I'm going to use. So I recently placed a fabric order. 
uh, two, fab two separate fabric orders for fall and winter projects. Um, and one has arrived and one is not because the other one's coming from Canada. <laughs> so um, I did get this which is a uh, cotton, this, which is a uh, stretch cotton twill, and then there's one down here you can't see, it's a very dark green right there. Uh, lace, what's it called? Lacy cotton poplin or something, it's not lacy. I don't know, I don't know. It's, anyway, all of them are for core fabrics um, and all of them are from, are for my fall projects. I've also got a couple of other pieces of fabric up here that I am planning to use in the near future, so that's why I, got this um, ladder shelf so that I could have some of my, the fabrics I was gonna be using sort of at hand. Um, so the fabric for this particular dress is not here yet. It is a floral fabric and I'd like to have this done for my birthday, which is uh, October 15th. So that is gonna be one of the first things. Um, I love the buttons that are down the front. I don't know why, I just really like that particular element. I definitely won't do the long sleeves, but I may do those short sleeves rather than doing sleeveless. All right, this one, this is for this. This is a, uh, this is some dead stock. It is a wool blend um, that I think is gonna be adorable for Christmas. So just a, a basic kind of pleated skirt. Um, I think I will do the buttons along the one side if you can see that version. Um, and I think that's gonna be really cute for the holidays. Again, I may or may not be making, be knitting a top to go with it. If not, I will probably look for a top to make to go with it. So I'm not, uh, not in a rush to start this one because one, it's a relatively, you know, there is not a lot going on here. It is, you know, Cut it out so the side seams put a waistband on there's this is not a super involved project so it hopefully hopefully it's not going to take super long um and two i don't need it until december so although every time i i plan wool for december for christmas uh, it ends up being like 70 degrees and every time i don't it ends up being like 20 so i'm not sure when I take the risk or not. I'm definitely not going to be making it this long. It is going to be probably like right at the knee instead. Um, but you know, that's a very easy adaptation. <laughs> All right. And then the other one is this floofy kind of blouse. This one, but maybe with the pin tucks that are along the yoke here. I am not sure about the fabric for this. I could do it in one of these, um, this kind of plummy cotton or that dark green, um, especially that dark green cotton poplin because it's very light. Uh, I'm just not 100% sure if I want it in a plain solid color or if I want it in something more floral. I do have um, couple of florals in my fabric stash. None of them are super fall-ish. So I really haven't made a decision on that. I definitely want this shirt though. I think it is, I would definitely make it a little bit longer. I don't need to be exposing my midriff in the fall, um, but I would not make it this long. So some kind of in between there. Um, so this is definitely something that is more involved. It has a lot of pieces, especially if I decide to do those pin tucks. I've got to set in sleeves, um, which I will say is a lot easier to do in sewing than it is to do in knitting. Um, not seamless set in sleeves for knitting. Those are a godsend. But before that sort of uh, technique was, was perfected and you actually had to sew, uh, knit your sleeve and then seam it into, that was awful. It's a lot easier with sewing uh, garments, especially with woven fabric. <laughs> um, but it is a more involved project. So the other things I have planned, I would like to do my first pair of jeans. I have this fabric right here. So it's like a nice indigo stretch denim. I am planning to use the ginger jeans pattern from Closet Core um, and to make the straight leg version 
of those. I was looking through the pattern and it is very involved. Um, I've done pants before, not jeans, and there's just a lot of stuff going on. There's zippers and pockets and rivets and if you want them and there's top stitching. So, you, so it's it's definitely a very uh, more a more complex project that I don't think I'm going to jump into right away this fall. I think I'm going to wait. Um, October is always a very busy month for us and then we've got a few kind of slow weeks in November before Thanksgiving comes. I think that's kind of where I'm going to aim to maybe tackle that project. Um, but it is definitely, um, it's going to be an adventure. So first pair of jeans, we'll see how that goes. Um, I also have another pair of pants in my queue. They, these are the Mitchell trousers. Um, this is also from Closet Core and I've got it uh, printed out. Um, it is not as involved as, as the jeans, but there's still quite a few moving pieces. I'm definitely going to be doing the wide leg uh, version of this. Um, and I'm not decided on the fabric. So the fabric that is uh, still in my outstanding order, one of them is a, um, is a green, a nice dark green corduroy. Maybe that. Maybe this, which is that stretch cotton twill. Now it doesn't call for a stretch fabric, um, but I think that would, you know, maybe make it a little closer fitting um, in the body and would still give you plenty of drape in the legs. So that's an idea I'm toying with. I do not know for certain. I think once I actually have um, those other fabrics that I'm waiting on, I'll be able to make some more of these decisions. Um, I also said I was going to be using this fabric. I want to use this to make like sort of a pleated midi skirt. I did pick a pattern for that. It is called <laughs> something. Uh, it is called Kenzie. This is from Seamwork. Um, I did not have this printed because it was so many pages. Um, because you have to have a really wide piece to then pleat. Normally when you get a digital sewing pattern printed, it's one or two of these extra big pieces of paper. And this was eight. Uh, it was going to cost me more to have it printed than it was to, <laughs> to buy the pattern. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. Um, I did, you know, trade in my credit for the pattern. I may look at the pieces and if I, cause it has a lot of the patterns are layered and you can, um, adjust the settings in the PDF to just see your size. And if doing that, I can just print out, do the print at home version, a fewer pages. I, I may do that, or I may, um, go ahead and look for something like a, a pre-printed, I'm sure there are plenty of pleated midi skirt patterns done by the big, the big name companies. And maybe next time I go to Joann's, I just look for one of those. Um, because if I'm going to pay <laughs> that much money to have it printed, I may as well just get the, the already printed paper pattern. So I do want to make like a cute, I don't know, you see them all the time on Pinterest, the fall fashion girls wearing their like, floaty midi skirts with their chunky sweaters and I don't know if I'm really that kind of person but I guess I'm gonna find out. I am also hoping to perhaps tackle um, a jacket project this fall. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I did recently have a pattern printed for a jacket that I like. Uh, it's not really a top priority for me. I have plenty of jackets. I don't really need one um, so I'm not entirely certain that I wouldn't be doing it just for the fun of doing it, which, you know, and a learning opportunity. Um, but if it ends up being something I'm not going to wear. So I'm kind of toying with that idea. Um, other than this top, I would like to do one or two more blouses um, and maybe another pair of pants. So that may be, uh, if I use the corduroy for the Mitchell trousers, I may use this to make yet another pair of uh, Petra pants. So I have a pair of the Petra pants. I have a pair of the shorts. The pants I have are the wide leg version, but there is also a straight leg version. So could do that. 
navy obviously I already have all the pieces and it's nice to really get uh, get your money's worth out of the pattern and um the last thing I, that I actually I'm probably going to get started on pretty soon this might be the next thing I start I have this fabric that you really cannot see down here this is a pinwheel corduroy um, that I bought at a sewing shop down in Alexandria months ago and it's just a brown with a floral pattern on it and it is very lightweight so it is a cotton viscose blend I looked it up because I didn't actually know when I bought it like, what was in it I just liked it. I was like oh corduroy I really like corduroy. Um, and it is very drapey because it is a cotton viscose and it is a very thin, it's not like a traditional corduroy. And I'm gonna make a pair of culottes with this. So I'm gonna make the Winslow culottes. Um, because the fabric is so drapey, it's really gonna give you that kind of hidden skirt, secret pants vibe. Um, it's really very fallish with the, with the colors and the sort of fall floral pattern. Um, and again, Cool lots are going to be a relatively straightforward uh, project. There's not a whole lot going on here. Um, you're not so concerned with, you know, precise fitting and things because it's supposed to be a, a loose and drapey fit. So I think that might be the first of the fall projects I tackle. I am not 100% certain. I do, I think I'm going to wait until my new fabrics finish arriving and then make some decisions. But there you have it, my cue for the upcoming fall season, things I think I am going to knit and sew for the autumn weather this year. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I hope maybe you found some inspiration in my upcoming knitting and sewing projects that I have planned, or um, maybe you found the Steamwork Design Your Wardrobe uh, program sound interesting and you're going to check that out or maybe just kind of try a version of it on your own whatever the case may be i hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful um please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if that is the case subscribe to the channel here i put out lots of good knitting related vlogs tutorials podcast uh, with some occasional sewing stuff as well and don't forget to hit the notification button so when new videos pop up every Saturday, you will be notified right away. Thank you again for joining me and I will see you soon in another video. Bye.